All right, what's going on, y'all? Really, bro? Got something in your eye. Um, Broken Games HDR, back at it again with another video uh, with cats in front of my camera. Um, so Spider-Man 2 might have uh, some information about it. So Tony Todd, the illustrious voice actor, um, and he's voicing Venom in Spider-Man 2, um, has revealed that Spider-Man 2 might be launching in September, right? And I, I thought, I kind of thought Spider-Man 2 might launch in, in, in September because the first one did, right? And we knew it was coming out this year. And, and September seems to be a Spider-Man kind of month. Starfield is also launching in September. So that got the people talking. Spider-Man 2 versus Starfield. How's it going to go? You know, who's going to win? I don't know. If, I don't, see, because Xbox has changed their way, their, Xbox has kind of changed how we are able to measure their success. They don't divulge game sales anymore. So it's hard to judge, you know, Xbox based off of sales um, because we know that their sales are lackluster um, and have been for a while. That's one of the reasons why Game Pass exists. That's not a shot, but that's just keeping it real. Game Pass exists because, you know, just selling games a la carte for them weren't, wasn't working out um, last, uh, last generation, right? It just wasn't working out for them. It was making them look bad. So they decided to change the game and make it all about player engagement numbers um, and make it all about how well Game Pass is doing. That's the whole... That's Xbox's whole brand now. It's, it's Game Pass. That's Xbox and Game Pass. That, that's it. There's nothing else. So here's what Tony Todd said, first of all. I didn't even read what the, what, the, what the man said, if I could freaking find it. And this is, I think this has been deleted. It's, yeah, it's been deleted by now. Um, Jim Ryan sent them snipers out for Tony Todd and told him to take this down, bro. What are you doing? And it is weird because voice actors know they can't reveal this type of information before the game is officially announced they, they know this especially someone as veteran as tony todd he know he can't do that but they be doing it anyway i don't i don't know why but he said uh and he said this is in reply to somebody asked you know just asking when he think the game is going to come out he said looks like september massive publicity coming in august commercial starting to drop in august also i'm told hold on to your, I think he said, hold on to your ass and hold on to your breath and hold your breath. Gonna be necessary. Let's let's talk about it. Starfield versus Spider Man. Let, let's say, let's. What game is gonna have more players? Well, Starfield is on more platforms and it's in Game Pass. It's it's gonna have more players. That's that's kind of that's kind of a given. Even though a, a lot of these first party games, like you know, for example, and here comes the other cat. Uh, God of War, for example, you know, look how much that sold in just a few, it, it, in just like, what was it, two months? It sold 11 million. I don't remember the number. Um, and I think Spider, but God of War was on PS4 also. So Spider-Man 2 is an actual PlayStation 5 exclusive, you know, through and through. So it doesn't have the PS4 to help it. So I think it can sell close but not that much in, in like two months. I don't think it's gonna do that much in two months, but a lot, have, a lot of um, PS5s have been sold and they are a lot more available since uh, God of War has dropped. So a lot of people are, are getting them and you know, uh, Spider-Man is a system seller. You gotta, gotta account for that. But you know, Starfield is gonna have more players um, up front because of Game Pass, because it's on, it's going to be on PC and Xbox and Game Pass. Yeah, all of that. What game is going to sell more? Of course, Spider Man, because for the same reason, because Starfield isn't Game Pass, so a lot less people are going to buy it because it's in a subscription service. And that's what, and, and both of them are winning in their respective fields. Sony cares more about the sales, and Xbox cares more about the player engagement. So they're, they're both going to win those equally, right? They're in different, they're fighting in different rings and they're both going to win those. What's going to have, what game is going to have more mind share? What are people going to be talking about more on Twitter? What's going to like eat up the conversation? This can honestly go either way. I honestly think this can go either way. Depending on how good Starfield 
actually is. Because if Starfield isn't necessarily a compelling game and there's not that much to talk about, like, you know, they talk about, oh, this large world and, and the scope and the scale and the density. If that stuff isn't true and there's not that much to talk about in Starfield, then it's, it's going to be Spider-Man. What the mind share is, is going to depend on a, a few things, right? It's, it's really going to just depend on how good each game is. And Insomniac, you know, of course, hasn't missed in a, in a, in a long while. Um, what game is going to have the higher Metacritic score? I'm going to say, so uh, what, let's go back to the mind share. If let's say, let's say Starfield is actually good and decent. Let's say it's, let's say it's, uh, Let's say it's a, it's a very good game. I'm going to give it the mind share. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it the mind share because it's obviously going to be a bigger, denser, a lot more stuff to do in that game than, um, than Spider-Man. Spider-Man is not going to be some small game either, but it's not going to be, you know, Starfield size, size, of course. Because when you look at, for example, with God of War 2018, you know, you look at the size and scope of that game, then you look at Ragnarok, a lot bigger. We expect them to do the same thing with Spider-Man 2. We haven't seen anything of Spider-Man 2, but we know a lot of the time that they've been investing in this game is to really invest in, in that world. We're hoping they do more than just Manhattan. And if it is just Manhattan, you got to do a lot of stuff in Manhattan. It can't just be the same map, right? They, they got to expand everything. But nevertheless, you know, Starfield is going gonna, is gonna to be uh, a bigger game, but God, but you know, Spider-Man is going to be much bigger than what we got in 2017. Um, higher Metacritic score. I'm going to go with, with Spider-Man. I think I, I just feel like I just, I just do not believe that Starfield is going to, I just don't believe it's going to get a higher Metacritic score than, than Spider-Man. I think Spider-Man is going to be more polished. I think it's gonna, you know, because like games like, you know, those Bethesda games, they don't necessarily do the whole, have the best stories or narrative or even visuals. Um, but it's the gameplay that matters to people in those type of games. That's what's so compelling. It's the huge sprawling world and there's so much to do with it and, and, and the time you spend, spend with it. And, and, you know, all the mods people are gonna do on PC. It's, it's about that. It's not really about the story or the visuals. You know, Spider-Man, I feel like, is going to hit on all the relevant um, dimensions for it to get like a, like a very high 80. I don't, I'm not going to say a, a, a 90 because I, don't, I, I, rarely, I rarely bet for any game to get a 90. Uh, even low 90s are very hard to obtain nowadays. So I say, say Spider-Man is going to get a high, a high 80, 88, 89. And I, I would think... think um, Starfield is going to get somewhere in the mid 80s, 86, 87. That's what that's what I, I would think. That's what I would bet. What is going to be the bigger IP? I mean, when you think about IP, like it, it, you have to think. How much does like what is the value of that name? Spider-Man surpasses just being a video game, as we know, he's he's arguably the most popular superhero in the world, arguably, um, probably is, right? Look, you look at how much the movies sell, obviously, you know, the hype around Spider-Man, the uh, Miles Morales and, um, Miles Morales and, uh, the original Spider-Man combined to sell 33 million. Um, you know, Spider-Man is at, Universal and theme parks and you know how Marvel even though Marvel movies have been mid lately it's still a huge IP it surpasses games it's games it's TV it's movies it's rides it's everything right it, it appeals to everything kids teens adults everybody likes Spider-Man the Starfield name and I mean no insult by this but I try to explain to this this to people it, Starfield means something to people who are hardcore gamers who care about Bethesda. Spider-Man is a household name. If you ask the average person about Starfield, they don't really know what that is because it's not out yet, because it's not a, an established name. It, it, 
it hasn't had that time to become something that's, you know, that's a known commodity in the world. It's, it's, a, it's just a name right now. To us gamers, we know, we know what it is. It has more meaning to us and, and, what, and, and the weight that it holds to us. But the average person, it means nothing. It's just a name. And most IPs, most new IPs, are gener generally nothing but a name until it's released, until it you know, becomes, um, it solidifies exactly, exactly what it means to, to consumers. So, you know, but I'm not holding that against Starfield because there's, no, there's almost no IP bigger than the Spider-Man IP. Um, it's, it's invaluable, right? You can't put a value on the Spider-Man IP. Listen, if they actually do go up against each other, and it's, I think it's a different, I don't think it's like a, a thing where one will necessarily cannibalize the other because, uh, yeah, there's a huge cross-section of people who will play both, but the games are so different that they're not, and because they're not the same genre, I don't think you have to worry about really stepping on, they don't really have to worry about stepping on each other because, yeah, Spider-Man is going to come out, and let's say it's a, I don't know, 25-hour game, 25 to 30-hour game. Yeah, it's, it's something people are going to play uh, for, you know, mostly for, it's going to take them like maybe a, a, a week or two to beat, you know, depending on whatever, you know, how, how fast you play or whatever. Um, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I keep telling people uh, that people put too much weight in how long a, a game is, you know. Like there's, there's people put so much weight in like, oh, the game that I could play forever. And I think the game, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that either. But people are, are like, just have this belief now that the value in games is in the time that you can get out of it. And I just, I just personally don't, don't line up with that sentiment. That's not how I value games based on, oh, I could have a thousand hours in it. And I could play it 10 years from now. I don't want to be playing no game 10 years from now. Nothing. <laughs> I don't want nothing. I don't want to be playing the same game, no, no game 10 years from now. Um, replayability has its value. No, I'm not knocking that. But I think some people just put like a little bit too much importance in that. When we've seen a lot of the games that are meant to have legs and and, and uh, meant for players to play it very long, they end up dying off quicker than the games that weren't intended to do that. And they have, and the games that, quote, like the games that, you know, have a shorter stay, they have a bigger impact. So to me, it's about, it's more about impact than it is about how long the game is or how much content is jam packed in there. So I think they, they'll both be fine. It, would, it will be a little bit of a cool competition because I miss that type of, type of stuff. You know, competitors launching their game in the same month, even though Spider-Man will probably launch towards the, end of, towards the end of September if it does launch in September, I believe. So, but yeah, I think that type of stuff is, is cool. Like, listen, your competitors, put your game in, in the same month. Don't shy away from it. I know they want to maximize their own game and make sure the sales are maximized by not being next to uh, a game, a, a, another big game, and not having, not, they don't want players to necessarily have to choose between their game and, um, and, 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 a, and, a, and a competitors. They don't want that. Let me know what y'all think. What's going to be the bigger game? All that, all them questions I ask. Let me know what y'all think. Follow me on Twitter, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, and I'll catch y'all on the next video. Peace.